For far too long, women, especially women of color, and especially their daughters, have been held back, marginalized by a society that undervalues both their contributions and their potential. As the father of two young girls, I myself have been very concerned about the limited opportunities available to them and about the damage being done to their own self-worth when they internalize the negative messages that are so insidious and so prevalent in the media and in public discourse. Today, we'll be talking with two extraordinary girls and their moms who are part of a groundbreaking program designed to build strong, confident, capable young women who deserve a place at life's table. Stay with us. Amy, Kaya, Jalea, Janae, welcome to My Healthy Mind. Thank, Thank you. you. I understand that you guys are part of a wonderful organization called the Rosebud Club. And moms, why don't you tell us how you found the club and tell us a little bit about it. Why don't we start with you, Amy? Um, I'm a teacher and one of my coworkers, the fellow teacher, was a member of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. And I didn't realize that that sorority had an affiliate group of young girls starting as um, early as age eight. So she told me about it and that they had an interest meeting coming up. And I brought Kaya um, to meet the women and just hear more about what the Rosebud Club did for young girls. And how did you hear about it? I was on Facebook, scrolling through Facebook, saw a flyer. It had there where you can go and hear about the club. I brought Julia to meet the other girls. She met Kaya and um, from there we joined. And when you two heard about it, were you really excited? Were you nervous? Some trepidation? I was nervous at first, but I wanted to make new friends outside of school just to have other people I can go to. So I'm really glad I made the decision to join it. And what about you, Julia? Um, I was also very nervous. I was like, kind of unsure about it because I'm not very good with meeting new people, but once I like meet those people and get to know them better, I'm like really good at being like interactive with them and stuff. And moms, when you first saw it on Facebook and were introduced to it, did you see something in the club immediately that you related it to your daughter? Like say, hey, maybe this will be good for her because? For me, I didn't realize there were women in the community that were pouring into young girls. And when I saw that, um, of course, it takes a village to help raise these children. And I was willing to lean into that village to help with Julia. And what about you? Um, yeah, for me, a huge draw um, as a white woman raising a biracial child was the social and cultural aspect of it because um, I know that I can meet a lot of her needs, but I know that I'll never truly be able to understand what it feels like to be in the color of skin that she's in. And so it was a group of women that I knew could and would, and would give her opportunity to really have other mentors and leaders in her life. And now that you've been there, is there anything that you say, wow, this is one of the reasons that I stay? I think just the environment and like how nice all the girls there are and just being able to be comfortable there is really important to me because it's not like in a classroom where you have to be quiet and raise your hand when you talk and it's just a really comfortable environment. And you both are very articulate, very, your intelligence comes through very clearly. Are there leadership opportunities for you at, at Rosebud? For me, I have led um, a few activities there. I had to show them how to make lip gloss and Miss Amy showed them how to make um, body oil or like, it was just co it was like flavored coconut oil that you could roll onto your wrist or onto your skin. And um, Miss Misha was there and she showed us how to make bath bombs as well. And it was just a fun experience. And what about you? Any leadership opportunities for you yet, Kaya? Once a year around Christmas time, we make blankets for the gospel mission and we have like a little um, event that goes on there with games and different crafts and stuff. But we take 
um, a big part in that at the Rosebud Club, and we get to um, help organize and make sure that things go smoothly. Mom, tell me a little bit more about what you've seen and, and what you see probably when they participate that, that really made you say, hey, I need this to help influence their environment. For Kaya, I just, I see, you know, the nerves that she had when she first joined, um, being shy and a little reserved herself, but then um, there was an older girl who just really took her under her wing and reached out to her. And now I see Kaya doing that for other young women, um, which is really exciting to see as a parent. I definitely see um, some of the programs where they really focus on their worth, their self-esteem, their value. I've seen her really take those to heart. Um, and now it comes through in her language and her um, actions. So I, I see a lot of positive change in her. And for you the same? Um, a little the same. The Rower Club is a little different because they actually have positions that they hold. Mm -hmm. And in the past, Julia has held the president and a proletarian position, which she had learned how to run an effective meeting, which was oh, good for okay. her. Um, she also had to do a welcome speech for the new girls that came in. And she was a little bit nervous, but she rocked it. When um, the Rosebuds and the Rowers get together, the Rowers are like a mentor to the Rosebuds mm -hmm. as well. So I see her shine in that aspect. And how old were you when you first started joining? I was nine years old when I did Rosebud, I believe. I did my um, about two, three years there. And then I um, progressed into being a rower. And how old were you, Kaya, when you joined? I was eight years old. And are you a rower now, or you're headed that way? I will be a rower in September. Now, when I picture Rosebud, should I picture it similar to um, other girl clubs um, that wear uniforms and wear patches and badges and stuff like that? Is it along yeah, that line or no? no? Okay, I didn't want to say their name. <laughs> okay, uh -oh. so you know what I mean. So yeah. tell me what distinguishes it a little bit in, in contrast to a different kind of club. The rowers and rosebuds are different because we are able to, how you would say, spread our own wings. We're allowed to explore different aspirations in life and career paths as in other clubs, they want you to all just fall in line and do as they say and follow activities as told, most likely. And we get to put in our input and we get to actually like ask questions and take notes and also grow as a person, but in a good environment. We can wear our natural clothes and just be us. There are little shirts that we get and jackets and hoodies and stuff, but um, we don't have to wear them. They're just an option. There's not really any badges or rewards we earn. So there's no patches and stuff, but there's rosebud swag if yeah. we want, right? So can I get some swag if I wasn't a rosebud? No. No, no you have to be a rosebud to get it? No. <laughs> okay, okay, that's fair. And where do you see uh, the future going for uh, a rower and a person in, in Rosebud? Is it just in that community or is it in other communities too? So rowers are recognized nationwide. They have their own conferences and retreats as well. Our hopes is that these girls grow up and join our undergrads level and even grad cross grad chapter. So when she says us, she means Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. So the, that organization is basically over the rosebuds and then the rosebuds turn into the rowers. So there's two different opportunities depending on a, a girl's age to join and be under the mentorship of the sorority um, but not belong to the sorority. The, the rosebud club and the rowers club are primarily for black girls but absolutely open to anybody of any background. And so it's quite diverse and um, I think they're exposed to, they're able to really just meet people that remind them of themselves, that look like them, that they can relate to, that they can um, interact well with and have similar experiences with.
Next time you need to see a doctor, don't go to a doctor. Call Team Wellness Online. With Team Wellness Online, you can see a doctor or a therapist without waiting, usually within 24 hours. Your televisit is private and 100% secure, and you can take all the time you want. So next time you need to see a doctor or therapist, call Team Wellness Online at 888-813-TEAM to make a virtual appointment, and we'll come to you. Have you found yourself in a situation uh, in your community where you've had to rely on the training that you received from Rosebud and Roar? Yes. Um, I'm in a lot of situations where, as some of the women of Sigma and Gamma Rose, um, Sorority Incorporated like to say, keep it classy and, you know, be professional, as you might say. Was there anything in your own past experience that motivated you to want to make things different or better for your daughter? Yes, um, I was, and still am an introvert. And as a child, I only like hung out with my parents. And for Julie, I wanted it to be different. I didn't want her to be like a loner, like I was, and wanted her to do have access to community service and girls who look similar to her or have similar interests as her, as well, and also work on her leadership skills. And what about you, Amy? As a child, I just, I moved a lot. I was never really in one elementary school for long. And so I struggled to, to fit in and to find, you know, my place in the world at a young age. And so I didn't want that for my daughter. Um, I wanted her to have something that was outside of school. So um, no matter what happened in school, she had a community and a group that she could be comfortable with. And um, I was probably quite the opposite of Janae, where I didn't spend much time around my parents um, when I was younger. Um, they were divorced. My mom was working a lot. And so I wanted her to have a, a group of girls her age that no matter what she could spend time with and that um, she could connect and feel comfortable with. And, and Rosebud, the way you guys described it so far, is very, very intriguing. It, it draws me in as you talk about it. Um, is it fun? Yeah. Yeah. yeah when Jenna Leah talk about sisters, um, the Roar Club slogan is sisters forever. So when she's talking about taking in with her sisters, mm -hmm. that's what she means. Okay, so you got a new family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've made a lot of really close friends from Rosebuds. And we talk outside of Rosebuds too, so it's not just like, oh, once a month you meet up. No, it's lifelong friendships that are really close. Kaya, what do you think are some of the challenges facing young women of color like yourself? I think biased opinions and just getting rude and mean looks from people when I'm in a grocery store or at school or just different places that I go on the daily. There's always at least one person who judges me a little, either for being um, African American or being African American and white. And um, yeah, and then when I go to summer camps, it's oh, we can't braid your hair because we don't know how because it's curly and not straight like ours. And I fear that when I'm older, the police may harm me or other people may harm me just because of my skin. And Jalea, do you have the same kind of reserves or experiences? When I was in summer camp, it was a lot of activities that um, I would like look at differently because I was like, I didn't grow up growing up doing this in my house. That's a part of the challenges we face, like discrimination against not only our skin color, but like our hair, the way we wear our hair. Like I get shamed all the time at school because I don't have the newest box braids out or whatever's going on and I don't have all that weave and stuff in my hair. And I was like, I like my hair. I'm sorry that y'all gotta act like your hair is a different type of texture or you gotta style it a certain way just to make it look, make sure you're happy. But I'm happy with the way my hair looks. We also face challenges against like our sizes too. Cause like I am clearly a bigger girl. So I always get shamed for that. Like I literally, I got bullied very hard in elementary school. Like a boy, he wasn't the skinniest boy either, but he shamed me 
because he had nobody else to pick on. So I have two daughters and they're biracial and my one daughter's complexion mirrors yours and my other daughter's complexion mirrors yours. What would you say to them that you've learned um, to overcome those challenges that you just described? I'd say um, try not to let it get to you because that's the goal of the person that is doing those things to you. They're trying to get in your head. They're trying to make you feel worse about yourself. So that's when affirmations really help me to let me know that I'm smart, I'm kind, I'm pretty, I'm all the things that they're saying I'm not. And it's just good to know that they don't really care about me, but I care about myself. And what advice would you give? Stick together, stay together. If your sister's being brought down by somebody else, stay right next to her and say, don't talk to her like that. And just like stick together and always know that you're gonna have one person by your side if everybody else is against you. So you have to stand up and you have to be strong and you have to be handled like a young lady, but still be firm and get your point across quick. And what you've learned today though, gave you the strength to stand up it and reassured encourage me. other people. It reassured me that I'm, I'm perfectly fine the way I am. Like, I'm still a boss. I'm still going to grow up and be the person I'm supposed to be, the life I was meant to lead, and just, that's that. That's awesome. And Kaya, what qualities has the program taught you that helps you rise to those challenges? It has taught me more about my self-worth and that when I'm mad, I shouldn't take it out on myself or others. I should express how I feel. In the Rosebud Club, we learned about how our voice matters and that we should use our voice because it's very important. And so um, I was being picked on by some eighth graders at my school earlier on in the year. And they would call me rude names and make fun of my hair. For example, um, one of them called me an Oreo because I was black and white. And so stuff like that just pushes me to my limit. And so I just told them to leave me alone and they didn't bother me again. At Team Wellness Primary Care Center, you will find all the basic services you need to be well and stay well. Come in for all your screenings. Come in for routine physicals and checkups. Come in for full service dentistry. Come in for vaccinations and immunizations. At Team Wellness Primary Care Center, we take care of your total health. Team Wellness Primary Care Center. Come on in. Self-esteem is important for everyone. It's especially important for girls of color because many times they are faced with stereotypes and racism that may impact who they are as individuals and it may impact their mental health. They may begin to compare themselves to um, individuals who are not racial minorities and that comparison may cause them to not see their own worth or their value, which can cause things such as depression or even anxiety and then they're just not comfortable within the skin that they're in. From my clinical experience, I've seen low self-esteem play out in many ways, sometimes physically where children may say they have a stomach ache or headache when they're asked to be around other individuals. It can also play out in their relationships um, where they may internalize the frustration that they have about how they're feeling about themselves and it may come across as anger or being more shut down or isolated. Sometimes children who have low self-esteem, they may also project that outwards and they may end up bullying other individuals. Self-esteem is a very a serious problem in our young people, particularly because it can lead to things like self-injurious behavior, suicidal ideation, and sometimes, unfortunately, sometimes youth 
act on that ideation. When we think about um, young girls of color, particularly they may be making a comparison to um, white Americans. They may think that because their hair is curly or their bodies has a different um, shape, um, that they are not okay. And that's a message that we definitely want to um, refute and work with girls to help them to realize that they are fine just the way they are. Social media, it definitely does impact everyone, um, but particularly girls of color. Um, sometimes within the media, there may not be positive images of, say for example, black Americans. And so that may, if you don't see positive images of yourself, that could impact how you feel about yourself and that can also impact um, your self-worth. Within our society, there's a lot of anti-black messaging that to be black is to not be beautiful or to be smart or to not um, be sufficient. And so young girls seeing those images, that can impact how they um, feel about themselves and it can even lead to things such as like internalized racism where we begin to believe messages that the dominant culture gives us and therefore reinforce low self-esteem. So there are several things that parents can do to help um, their children build self-esteem. The first is positive affirmations. Um, positive affirmations can be, you know, simple as you taking a sticky note and putting positive sayings like you are smart or you are beautiful or I love your brown skin, you know, anything like that that you can put on their door or on their, um, in their book bags, they see it when they go to school. So using positive affirmation is important. And a second thing I would say is that we as adults, we have to um, remember we're our children's first teachers, so we have to work on ourselves, that we have positive self-esteem ourselves. I recommend in my own book, Black Lives Are Beautiful, um, that we use things such as creating a sense of community, creating a village for your child, um, using strategies that can uplift who they are. I would say as a person of color, I've had to deal with um, self-esteem issues and overcoming those. And what helped me was finding mentors um, when I was away at college who built up my identity um, and who also encouraged me to read, read about black Americans and that helped build up my self-esteem and self-identity. We have to as parents be gatekeepers of what our children are seeing. And being a gatekeeper may be limiting access to things that are not healthy for them, but then also bringing in, like there are plenty of books out there um, that build up self-esteem in children of color, um, reading to your children, providing them with positive images of people who look like them can also be um, great resources. I know we have two very proud moms. What has the Rosebuds and the Rower taught you about your moms and how important they are to you? It taught me that my mom does a lot more work than I give her credit for. Not like household necessities, but like what she does like for her personal job and what she does in the sorority. Um, Cause she was the rower advisor and she had so much work to do. She wasn't just making our stuff, she was coordinating all these events and all these things. I just watched her sit there and do all that work and I was like, oh my gosh. Like I didn't, like I don't commend her enough or give her enough credit as I should for all the work she does in the community. I'd have to agree with Julia because for one of the Rosebud meetings, there was um, a certain material that we needed in order for us to be able to do a project and I'm pretty sure my mom went to like five different stores just trying to find that one thing. And it was like a Sharpie or something. But she ran around just trying to make sure that we were happy and putting our needs before hers. And that was just very inspiring to me. And what do you girls hope to do with all that you learned and all that you will be learning while you're participating in Rosebud and Roar for the future? Honestly, I hope to just like kind of just like remember all the things, not only my mom, but the sorority and all my mentors have taught me and put it into my education and in my career. Um, I think that I'd like to put all of the knowledge and things that we've learned in Rosebuds and soon to be rowers um, into my future life and help that with setting goals and being responsible and mature 
and kind and just making sure to always be respectful to everyone. What would be your final message to every girl that is watching this show today? What would you say to them? What would your parting words be to them? Let's start with you, Julia. I'd say to spread kindness and to not let anybody bring you down. And Kaya? I'd say get at least one good friend that you can always lean on and go to, whether that's through a sport or an outside of school activity or even an in-school thing. Just make sure you always have one person that you can go to no matter what and be able to trust them. When we look at our lives one million years from now, we'll know we let the world up just like that. And when we look at our lives one million years from now, we'll know we let the world up just like that. If you're having any kind of mental health crisis, we can help. At Team Wellness Crisis Centers, you'll be seen immediately, stabilized in our own private facility, and given all the care you need to get better. Don't wait. Call the Team Wellness Helpline at 1-888-813-TEAM. It could be your lifeline. Thank you for being with us today as we examine the roles and the opportunities for young women of color and how those are changing for the better through programs like Rosebuds and Rowers, working so successfully to build self-esteem in our girls. If you'd like to learn more about this or any mental health issue, visit us on our website at MyHealthyMind.com or on Facebook at My Healthy Mind Show or on Twitter. If you missed any of our past episodes, you can view them on YouTube you'll find a complete list on our website. And as you follow us on Facebook and Twitter, please feel free to comment and to suggest ideas for new shows. We'll see you next week for another edition of My Healthy Mind. Let's talk about it. Be sure to like and subscribe for more episodes of My Healthy Mind.